Okay, I think we are done. We'll call the meeting to order. Ready? Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Debbie, we've got Tom Shelley on the phone. Uh, where did Debbie go? I got it, sorry. I'm on the <laughs> She was right there. Uh, okay, uh, noting attendance, we're all here. So, okay, we are going to begin with Flex Loop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first up we have our consent agenda. Uh, in it to approve the minutes of December 2nd, 1930th meeting. I need to approve the minutes from December 2nd, 9th, and 30th meetings. Second? Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any concern? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, next up we have student reps. Cote and Tana Monson. Hello, I'm Owen Cote. I'm Tanner Munson. And we're going to present some current updates, and I'll start with the sports. Both the boys and girls basketball teams are ranked number one in the state with the boys' record 10 and 1 and the girls' record 9 and 2. The boys will be at home, well, they'll be at Lebanon on Tuesday and at home on Friday versus Dallas, and the girls will be at home on Tuesday and away at Lebanon. They're at, my bad. They're at home Tuesday versus Lebanon and away at Dallas on Friday. The wrestlers, the wrestlers are doing super good and they just won a tournament at Wilsonville and have a league meet at South Albany on Wednesday. The boys and girls swimming is also doing very well coming up a tournament win this weekend at the Croc Center. They have a home meet this Tuesday versus West Albany. And the unified basketball team is in full swing. They have their first home game on Friday the 24th. And now for a few updates on the clubs and activities. Uh, robotics just had their first tournament this Saturday. Uh, and then two, the Two of our high school teams were bumped out in the first round of the final bracket after going one and five in qualifiers. Uh, so not that great, but they're making progress. And our rookie team of one actually went five and one in the qualifiers and had to team up with the West Salem team and they ended up winning the division bracket and which now qualified him for the platinum division at state. And after they won that division, uh, they went on to compete against the other two division champions uh, they lost the first match but rallied back to win the second two and earn the tournament title and an invitation to the U.S. Open Robotics Tournament in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Wow. And the robotics competition, uh, next one, is this Saturday at North Marion High School. Um, FBLA uh, competition season is about to start with regionals being on the 1st of February at Chemeketa. Uh Over 25 members are competing. Uh, that's going to be pretty fun. Uh, coming up is National FBLA Week from February 2nd to the 8th. Uh, also, the whole month of February is National Career and Technical Education Month. And to celebrate, FBLA and FFA are organizing a donkey basketball fundraiser on Monday the 24th of February uh, from 7 to 9. FBLA and FFA will both have teams, and the winner of the game between them will play against an SHS staff team. That's always a pretty fun event. Um, yearbook, uh, they just are approaching their first major deadline on the 21st of this month and they're submitting the first third of the book and they're very excited to see all the, all the hard work come together. And then for ASB, uh, we're about to put on the winter semi-formal dance this Saturday from 8 to 11. Uh, on Friday night at the halftime game, uh, of the basketball game, the Winter Court Royals will be announced. Uh, we are st also, we're restarting up uh, We Dine Together. Uh, so We Dine Together is a program where ASB students find other students sitting by themselves at lunch and strike up a conversation, try and build relationships. Our goal with this is for everyone to have friends and to feel a part of our school community. Alright, and also this month is School Board Appreciation Month. We would like to take this opportunity 
to thank you all for the time you put in to help build our school district. We understand this position is voluntary and appreciate all the extra time you put in to build and to better our schools and improve our education experience. On behalf of our staff and students, thank you. Thank you. ideas, opinions, questions, concerns, or compliments, please be certain to sign in before you present. Remember that we all model the way for our students and we ask that you share your thoughts in a respectful way. The board's role during public comment is to listen. Rarely will you get an immediate response to information. If there is follow-up necessary, we will direct our superintendent to do that. In order to ensure equity among speakers, the board will limit remarks to three minutes per individual. If a group of three or more wishes to appoint a representative to speak on its behalf, the board will extend the time for remarks to five minutes. A second public comment will occur later in the agenda specific to discussion and action items of this meeting. Anybody wish to uh, address the board tonight? I did sign in in the back. And I, I do thank you all for this position. I know you put in a lot of time, and I really appreciate it. Um, there are two quotes from Fred Rogers of Mr. Can, Rogers. Can you state your name for us? Even Lori Chadwick. Thank you. There are two quotes from Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood that I would like to share. The first is, there are three ways to ultimate success. The first way is to be kind. The second way is to be kind. The third way is to be kind. And the second quote is, anyone who does anything to help a child in his life is a hero. Let's work together to be heroes for our children by being kind and respectful to one another. At the last board meeting, the OSBA felt that the superintendent search would be okay as long as it was started by the end of February. Our district has such a high graduation rate, our teachers are rated so highly, and Silverton is such a great place to live. I don't see why a superintendent wouldn't want to work here. My hope is that we can put aside our differences on the board and in our community and work towards searching for a new superintendent to lead our school district by the end of February, if not sooner. It's also time for the district to finalize the contract with our teachers. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I also signed in. My name is Karen Garst, 1205 Tenino Drive. Um, I too want to reiterate thank you for your time and service. Uh, it's clear from the last year this is not an easy task that you have undertaken, so thank you. When the board was challenged for not following the criteria in the budget committee selection last year, several people complained. Tom Buko sent an email in response that stated the following, and I quote, You ask, are we wiser? Yes, we are. Only in the past few years have we seen greater interest in being placed on the budget committee. We are not used to analyzing the criteria and selecting and defending our decisions when it comes to budget committee selections. It showed. Struggling through new things makes us wiser. I anticipate more questions on the run-up to the next year's budget committee selection. At the last school board meeting, four of you would not accept this contrition and willingness to do better from the school board members named in the complaint. Instead, you chose to spend $250 an hour 
for a lawyer to dig further into the weeds. This is hypocritical. Our teachers are the ninth lowest paid in the state. This is unacceptable. Silverton was just measured as the 28th highest of all cities in Oregon regarding the median income per capita in the state. I implore the current board to heal this district by finalizing a contract with our beyond patient teachers and moving forward with a permanent superintendent search. Thank you. School district is moving forward together. Regardless of our backgrounds, beliefs, and a long list of other things that could divide us, I believe we all, each and every one of us, truly care about our students. <clears throat> we want our students to receive the best education possible so that when they graduate, they have the knowledge and the skills to su successfully take the next steps in their lives. We all need to be aware our actions, either negative or positive, have a direct impact on our students. We need to serve as role models of how people with differences can peacefully resolve them to work towards a brighter future for everyone. It's time that we put our differences aside and work for what's best for our students. We need to work together by sharing our ideas about what we want in the next superintendent. The board needs our input and we need to move forward together to accomplish this task. It's what's best for our students. I encourage the board to call a special meeting to move forward with the superintendent search. Anybody else? My name is Dawn Tacker. I signed in in the back. So today is kind of a great day to be sharing this with you <coughs> since our uh, collective bargaining team, the Summer Falls Education Association, spent all day in bargaining and mediation at this point. The district's been bargaining with the union for nine months six of which they've been working without a contract. Would any of you work for six months without a contract? How does this help us heal? How do we attract excellent educators with this hanging over our heads? I'm gonna share with you, I'll give you copies, a document that was signed by 356 residents since Sunday night, and we're still counting. There's also six pages of comments that they submitted to go with this. The statement is, we, the undersigned, request the Silver Falls School District finish mediation with Silver Falls Education Association immediately. SFSD can and should move forward in the best interest of our students by, number one, demonstrating the district's appreciation of our educators, number two, showing a willingness to right past wrongs, number three, helping heal the relationship between administrators and educators. Considering that our children's dedicated teachers have been bargaining again nine months and have been working without a contract for six months, that their SFEA's budget for collective bargaining is being drained, Silverton High School's high graduation rates are due to the dedication of good teachers. Our district was ranked number seven in the state with teachers getting a A minus grade, the highest grade on the report for our district. Our teachers are the ninth lowest page in this, paid in the state, according to a 2018 States and Journal article. The language in current SFEA contracts, as shown in the Miller Arbitration Report, does not protect teachers from being unfairly targeted, retaliated against, or bullied. We request that SFSD accepts SFEA requests for changes in contract language that provide much needed protection for our teachers, that contract and language changes reflect the respect and the support of the board and the district for our educators. 
that salary schedules reflect the professionalism and high qualifications of our teachers and allow the district to attract top talent. And finally, that contract mediation is completed no later than January 31st, 2020. I understand that last point may no longer be an option since there's um, updates since 6 p.m. I'd like to ask all of you, administration and the board, please move forward. Provide our educators with a fair contract and fair compensation. Thanks for your time. Thank like to uh, brush the board tonight at this point? Nope. <coughs> okay. We are going to move into our discussion items. First up is a proposed revision to policy GBDA, Mother Friendly Workplace, and LDE is our first reading. Uh, sorry, first reading and public charter schools. to the Oregon School Board Association policy update service and they um, have a, a team of um, policy experts and attorneys who in response to legislation uh, that gets passed um, they will go through policies every year throughout the year and just update policies and then they send us their proposed re uh, uh, revisions that would keep our policies in line with uh, new legislation so that's what we have here uh, so this is just a first reading. We're really just notifying notify the public that we are considering these policies. These will come, there's really no action uh, tonight. They will come back for adoption uh, or approval next month. And so I would invite uh, anybody to uh, email me with their questions or comments about any of these policies. Uh, and that will be sort of our standard procedure for when we have uh, policies coming for us. That's all. Sure. Anybody have a chance to look at or have any questions for Mr. Peterson or for any of us to discuss? I just have, I had one question, um, the mother-friendly workplace. So all of the language in the new policy and the revisions comes directly <coughs> from OSBA, is that right? Okay. Yeah. That's a, really all right. And about 99 times out of 100, we accept uh, their proposed recommendations. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on to uh, item B, Integrated Pest Management. And Lauren had a chance to present to us the information a few meetings ago, and this is our chance to discuss it again. And uh, we do have an action item later on regarding this. So if there's any questions, now is a good chance to uh, bring in. So the only thing I would um, just bring up is I know we've had some concerns. Sorry to have my back to you. Or, oh. um, about the use of Roundup. I also understand that it's still on the list of low impact or approved pesticides, whatever the, the verbiage is there. So um, I wouldn't necessarily expect to make any changes to this particular plan, but I would like to keep that in mind as we move forward and see if we can continue to explore alternatives. I think it's, from what I understand, it's just a matter of time <coughs> before that drops off the list or becomes understood to be more hazardous than, than maybe it was originally thought. And so I think it's, as long as we can keep that in mind, that we always want to be looking for those alternatives and maybe have a, have a chance, um, you know, to pay attention to, to the guidance that comes out, um, but just to pay attention to that. Yeah, and I like the way Lauren talked about the fact that they only use it sort of where really necessary, you know, where, mm -hmm. where they really need to make sure, particularly where there's not a lot of student contact, and things like that. Mm -hmm. so, sounds like they've got it in my mind. 
pretty well under control. I agree with your point, and it's something to watch. I was able to um, reach out to the city of Silverton, and, and I would like to see perhaps if we could revisit it next year. Um, look at the vinegar concoction that they're still working on. Ms. Wooster uh, shared with me that they're in the early stages, and so they're still trying to work out what works and what doesn't, and so they can't really say if it is or isn't. But if we give it another year, perhaps they'll have a little bit more information and history, and I'd like to extend possibly a joint effort with the city in the future. Seems reasonable. Oh, sorry, I had to find you now. What, what, so, how, how often do we revisit the IPM? Well, the IPM plan itself is really, um, it's basically just laying out the principles that we follow, um, trying to do other things first before we go to using uh, low impact pesticides. So as far as revisiting the chemicals and items that we use, um, like shared and it's in the plan, um, OSU is, is really the one that's most on top of this. They're the one that creates that low impact pesticide list that we utilize. So they're, they're pretty much the ones that created all of the draft plans, everything for the IPM program when the law came out. And so that's why we kind of follow our lead on it. Uh, so as far as chemicals, um, if something, something could be taken off the list at any time. And, if, and they're, they're gonna be the first ones to pull it off of that list. And if it comes off the list, then it's no longer a low impact pesticide and we can't use it unless there's an emergency. So. Right. Okay, and you, I mean, you're a certified applicator, is that right? I'm not a certified applicator, but I do not do applications, so, but we have two certified But you get those emails from the state and stuff when there's updates. Yes, absolutely. So, and any, anytime there's a change where something's removed, we get notified to, uh, through, through uh, OSU also. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I, I see those things, I'm an applicator, so I see those things every time. I get, get a monthly, you know, so we see those types of updates all the time. Mm -hmm. I just have one additional question. On the, the testing of lead in water, I see that it's on a six-year schedule. Is that state guidance, or where does that? Yes. Where does, oh, it is? That is. Okay. So, and this plan is already, just so you know, that, uh, as far as the Healthy and Safe Schools plan you're referring to. Mm -hmm. So um, this has already been reviewed by the state, so and they've pretty much approved of okay. it. So really, it's just a matter of you guys taking a look and, and basically approving it. So. Thank you. Yeah, which is probably, I mean, if nobody else had any questions on IPM, we could go into Health and Safe Schools and make sure there weren't any additional questions there. Oh, sorry, did I jump the gun? That's okay. <laughs> Tom or Shelly, any, any questions you wanted to, to ask? Um, I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay. I'll get it. I guess that's it. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Next up, item D. So, the uh, idea is to ch change the board meeting start times to 6 p.m. Uh, we saw that the city had done that. At least I think that's how that got started. Is that right, Debbie? That was the information. <coughs> and, you know, it seemed like something that was reasonable to bring up for discussion tonight. And, uh, see if that was going to work for the board and if we thought there'd be some concerns as far as public, as far as, uh, you know, our process. I know sometimes we end up running fairly long and, and this would offer us the opportunity to get an earlier start. It also <coughs> reciprocally encroaches perhaps on dinner time and or other things that, you know, might be problematic. So I'm open to input. Curious what you guys think. Is it difficult for anyone's work schedules? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't sometimes. I, you know, I don't necessarily end at five. Um, yeah. I don't have, in principle, don't have a problem with that. And I, the better part of the time, I could make it work. But I just wanted to make sure that there weren't individuals who regularly worked until, you know, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Is it primarily just to be able to finish earlier? Is that primarily the driver around it? It certainly would be for me, right? I think any, we we all might have a different view as far as why. As far as my own opinion, yeah. I mean, I think the idea would be. We're not rummy at 10:45 trying to wrap up some executive <laughs> session. So, right, true. Another consideration is that uh, we have our uh, students uh, do 
you want to kill me for it. And right. So, ten o'clock is there. Right. Um, need to let them get this operating. That's a good point. Well, it would it would certainly um, curb into my participation because I mean, like tonight driving from Lincoln City, if it was at six, I wouldn't make it. And even if I could call in a lot of times at six, I wouldn't be able to make it. So, um, and I know when I had kids in school and you know playing uh, sports, you could at least attend the freshman JV games that they was at. So, like just something to there's, there's consider. Yeah. Them, yeah, and I'm just fearful that another hour it would just prolong all the work enough. I don't think we'd get out any earlier. <laughs> I can almost guarantee it. So, gotta have goals. I say cut it off at ten. That's what we normally did before. Yeah, I, I so, think it's still a goal. Yeah. Thank you. It, I'm flexible. flexible. It, it doesn't impact me that way. I just want to hear what other people. Have to say, I can see pros and cons. Yeah, yeah, me too. Tom, Shelley, thoughts you want to share on this? I might have no problem with it. I'm okay with it. Starting earlier is okay, but I, I tend to agree with her final statement there that uh, I don't think we get out of the earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if our desire is to be done earlier, I think we all do. You know, we as a board can just work at marshalling our arguments better, getting our discussions to a conclusion quicker, I think might be might be helpful. Um, but but I'm not gonna get you know I guess I, I guess we're both not later, so I guess I gotta try, you know. But probably as of right now I'm kind of um, I lean towards no and just leave it, you know, leave it as bad, but what's the what is um what's the uh 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 administrative administrative team? And so they gotta spend a lot of things too. They have to they've been given input on this maybe maybe Paul gave some input I didn't hear very well. Yeah, a little bit, but I was gonna get to them next. I think I think we would love to hear what you guys think as far as the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Open, open mic, <laughs> and you guys share your thoughts. I, I sure like to get uh, my staff home uh, earlier than ever possible. Uh, I mean, they are they're pretty, in long days, and uh, if we can get them home earlier. That's that's good for staff too. So, uh, Earth's probably not wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any any other discussion on this? The city started this their new time frame this last meeting. Is that <coughs> true? I wonder. I think it was the last. January. They moved their yeah. yeah. they moved their That's yeah. what really. I guess what I wonder what the result is. Are they, you know, is, are their meetings getting longer or are they staying about the same? I, I just wonder. It's probably too early to do. Probably <laughs> one uh, sample right. does not right. make a case. <laughs> Okay. Are our high school students still here? Yeah, yeah. Any thoughts on this? Uh, I would not be able to attend because usually I get home from practice about five thirty and I have to shower and look nice for this. So I'm trying to be staying up for this. So the clock looks better for you. Yes. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Well, that was it for uh, the discussion items we had for tonight. Next up would be administrator and staff reports. Um, Mr. Pierce? So I have my uh, number report plus Division 22 assurances. So first I'd like to welcome everyone and take a moment to wish everyone a happy new year in 2020. I'd uh, like to especially recognize our volunteer school board members this month as this is School Board Appreciation Month. Uh, our school board members generously spend their time and give of themselves to serve our students and communities. It's uh, probably impossible to count up the number of hours they give our community, and I'd like to now ask everyone to join me in celebrating uh, School Board Appreciation Month by sharing our collective appreciation for our volunteer school board members.
official guidance document uh, is 89 pages long regarding how districts are to prepare for the Student Success Act. It was finally released on December 19th by the Department of Education. Uh, fortunately, we have been working from earlier drafts and tips from colleagues, and so we're well on our way. We also have support from the lab at ESD, and we're participating with other regional school districts in the application development process. Uh, we'll be working hard on January 22nd with all of our school leaders in reviewing some data, inputs from our focus groups, as well as strategies to help students as intended by the legislation. As I've noted before, I'm pleased to share my perspective that our district is accustomed to analyzing data from a variety of sources uh, and disaggregating that data and making data informed decisions. I have confidence in our teams working on this and I will continue to insist that our district equity team provides, uh, excuse me, uh, applies an equity lens to the look ahead. I am likewise pleased that we are seeking additional input from staff. On January 23rd, we will be meeting with more staff, including counselors, uh, to gather input regarding behavior and mental health needs and interventions for students. We will be presenting the first draft of our student uh, of our SIA plan at the February 24th board work session and taking public comment at that time. We will also run a public comment period from February 25th through March 8th before the final draft of the SIA plan, that stands for Student Investment Account, is brought to the board for approval on March 9th. Uh, lastly, I'd like to encourage everyone to drive safely in these winter conditions. Several of us were up early this morning monitoring the weather and out checking the roads and all the things were good at 5 a.m. The snow started coming down hard at the higher elevations in the late morning and we elected to dismiss Silver Crest students at 12.30 today. We'll be up early again tomorrow morning and I'll also be out driving the roads to make sure we have safe travel conditions for our students and staff. As always, watch the district's social media accounts to be the first to know of any changes to schedules. And lastly, uh, every year Oregon school districts are required to publicly report their district's status with regard to the state standards of the Division 22 of Oregon Administrative Rules on February 1st. This year, as was, as was reported last year, I can report to the Silver Falls School District Board and the public that the district is in compliance with and implementing all applicable standards for public elementary and secondary schools in the state of Oregon as said in OAR Chapter 581, Division 22. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Uh, I haven't seen Steve. Or is he? Steve sends his regrets. He had to uh, get home uh, this evening, uh, but his, his financial report is, is here. If anybody has any questions, I invite you to uh, send those to me, and I'll uh, or, or directly to Steve, and we'll track down answers for you. Okay. I have a chance to look at them. Yeah, I just want to say that I'm really appreciating the forecast by format. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Okay, well, we're kind of flying through this. So, next up, we have board reports. And Tom, if you would like to give us an update on the complaint proceedings, we would be happy to hear it now. Sure, uh, can you hear me? We, I can, I think most yeah. of us can. Okay, yeah, I'll read this. I, I have a prepared statement. I gave Johnson a copy, so if it comes across not very clear, Debbie can enter it into the record properly. So, anyway, here it goes. On January 7th, 2020, the Fall School District engaged Rebecca Jacobson an attorney, an attorney with the Salem law firm, Garrett Heeman Robinson, to conduct an investigation into the complaint filed on November 25, 2019, regarding Pi Fortner. Ms. Jacobson has served as a school law attorney since 2006 and is experienced in conducting investigations related to potential violations of board policy and state law. The board is committed to supporting a prompt, thorough, and transparent investigation and will keep the community informed as the process concludes. Ms. Jacobson has already started the interview process. She understands our desire for a thorough yet swift re resolution. It was understood that this process might conclude in two to three weeks, yet no guarantee was given. Okay, that was it. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you bet. You know, it's an ongoing process, so I don't, I don't know what else I can add to that. It's just, it, it, you know, there's the, there it is, and there's, and there's the anticipated time frame. Very good. Yeah, two to three weeks sounds 
real promising, and I know that she's definitely underway. So. Yeah, very good. Okay, any other uh, board reports from anybody? All right, SFPA, you're up next. I promise we'll get the agenda right sooner or later. Part of the problem is I don't look at it until I get here, so. <laughs> um, well, I would love to take this opportunity just once again to thank you guys for your work on the school board um, and we really appreciate um, your willingness to let us come and speak and just your willingness to work with us and to hear from your teachers so thank you very much uh, this month and always <laughs> um, so as you know uh, our bargaining team participated in our first mediation session today with the district's bargaining team. And so I just wanted to read a statement um, that we prepared after mediation today. Um, SFEA's bargaining team had our first day of mediation with the district team today. Little progress was made and we continue to be stuck on the remaining language and on economics. The patience of your teachers is wearing thin. This district has not been a friendly place to work for many teachers in recent years. We've tried to work with the district to move forward since the arbitration cases last year and feel some progress in certain areas. However, it has become very clear that we will not be able to move forward and heal until this negotiation is complete. It's time for the district to show that our concerns have been heard and make things right for your teachers, both economically and with further protections to ensure we don't sure to ensure we won't have to endure, the, endure these injuries and indignities again. The current economic proposal from the district is a far cry from what your teachers deserve and what they will be willing to ratify. We have one more chance to settle this in, me, in mediation and your teachers are ready for whatever comes next. So that's not meant to be um, a declaration of anything other than where your teachers are at as far as our feelings go toward mediation, this process. Um, it's been stated several times tonight that we've been at this for nine months. Uh, we actually had one of our team members um, ha get pregnant and have a baby um, since we began the process of contract negotiations. Um, so it's, it's been a long haul and we are ready to come to a conclusion um, and your teachers stand united um, and are ready for whatever whatever that looks like. So, thank you for allowing us uh, to address the board. And yeah, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up, we have our second public comment related specifically to discussion and action items. Anybody would like to present now? Okay. On to our action items. Action item A approve integrated pest management plan. I move to approve. Oh, sorry. Were you looking for public comments? Got it. Missed you, sir. I came in late, but I think Tom's uh, report would make my testimony or my comments appropriate. My name is Bob Schaefer, uh, 5942 Brush Creek Drive Northeast. Um, lived here about 40 years. And I just a couple of comments. I have to really comment Silver Falls School District on the website. Fantastic, as far as I'm concerned. A lot of information, way more than I could get through in one day. The reason I'm here is went to a ball game on Friday night and just talking to some people in the audience. You know, what Tom talked about as far as this complaint process seemed to be the sub main subject of, 
of uh, discussion for for some of the people I was talk for the people I was talking to. And going through the board policy, I did not see anything regarding in the communication section about internet communication. And I, I called OSBA and and uh, to see if they had any boilerplate um, policy language. And the reason what I'm what I'm suggesting is that you as a board develop a policy for internet communications. There's seven members on the board, four people create a quorum. In this day and age, uh, you, can, you can carry on meetings, obviously, without having to be in the same room through the internet. And so I think there's, in my mind, misperceptions out there that could be rectified if you as a board develop an internet communication policy. And and I guess the way the way I would look at it is if you're emailing, you know, one another, personally that's fine. But the perception out there is that there's school district issues that are being emailed about. And if four of you all of a sudden email each other about the same topic, essentially you've created a quorum, you know, outside of the public. And in 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 this day, right now, I'm I'm working with a team. Uh, it's a, it's a pension fund from Brazil. The team members are New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, and about 60 miles out out of Atlanta. And and we can have meetings just like this, except it's all, uh, you know, over over the internet. So the internet is a very effective tool for communication. I couldn't find anything about it in the. Uh, School board policies, so I would recommend that you look into this. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Yeah. Great point. <coughs> okay, anybody else? No? Okay, we're going to move into action items. Uh, action item A approved integrated pest management plan. Any Further discussion, or I will certainly accept a motion at this point. I move that we approve the integrated pest management plan. I second it. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the integrated pest management plan, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion passes unanimous. And B, approving the health and safe schools plan. I move to approve the healthy and safe schools plan. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this? All those in favor of approving the health and safe schools plan signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion passes. Okay, item C. This is the hard one. Changing the board <laughs> meeting start time to 6 p.m. I, I think that we would even need more information to even have a vote on this. I, I would agree. So. I'm not ready to move it based on the input I heard tonight, based on Herb's input, based on students' input based on our own uncertainties about whether the pros outweigh the cons. Uh, so I'm not, I would vote against it should anybody move to pass it. All right. Anybody feel differently? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I recommend that you just take the vote then. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, I guess I'll go on the record saying that I move to change the board meeting start time to 6 p.m. See, now I'm in favor. Right. <laughs> I, you don't, you don't, I better board. not. You can still vote against it. I move that we remove the item C change board meeting start time to 6 p.m. from the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> or you can vote to keep it as is. 
Can we keep it at Can we cable it? Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I move that we keep the uh, school board meeting start time to 7 p.m. I second it. <laughs> Moved and seconded to keep the start time at 7 p.m. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. Okay, motion passes. Did you get that, David? Yeah. Okay. All right, with that, we are going to move into executive session under ORS 1926602F to consider records of death by law from public inspection, sick leave bank request, as well as 1926602D to conduct deliberations with persons designated by the governing body to carry on labor negotiations. Thanks. Okay, we're gonna come out of executive session back into regular session and we have one action item, consideration of a sick leave bank request. I move to grant the sick leave request of Leanne Harley for up to 25 days. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in considering of tonight's agenda and no other discussion items, I move that we adjourn. Adjourn. All right. Thank you again. Perfect. Thank you.